Hi, my name is Paige from Pager World, and in today's video, I'm going to teach, well, not teach you guys, but tell you guys a little bit about the art supplies that I use and what I do when I bring my art supplies with me. Okay, so what I'm going to start with is um, some, like, the number one thing you should do if uh, you're a student in high school or lower. You're going to want to have one pencil case for your pencils that you don't mind lending people because people always ask um, especially if you're like if they know that you draw they know that you have pencils so you're gonna want to have one pencil case with a bunch of like really crappy materials so just like crappy pencils crappy erasers like really used up ugly looking ones and you just keep it in just one pencil case because what always ends up happening is if this is my art pencil case it's big. It's got all my fine liners in it. It's got a bunch of my favorite pencils in it. It's got my liquid chalk. It's got my gel pen. It's got all my really nice fine liners. And if you're out with this on your desk at school, someone's going to come up and like grab a pen and say, can I use this? And you're going to have to say no because this is your nice art pen. It can't be written. Like You can't write your notes in this. It's going to be ruined. So you're going to have to say no, and they're going to be like, but you have so many of them. You, you Look at how many you have. And they're going to want to use them, and you're going to be like, no, you can't use them. So make sure you always have a different pencil case, so if you're not drawing, you at least have a bunch of little, little pencils and stuff. So if anyone ever asks to borrow a pen, you can just give them a crappy pen that you don't care about. And then you don't have to worry about them thinking that you're a jerk for not giving them one of these. So... That's my biggest advice for people who are in high school. If you're if you're in art school, people people all know the supplies, so so they, they don't care. <laughs> but I always had that problem when I was in high school. People would ask me for pens, and I'd be like, I don't have any, and they'll be like, But you have like six pens in your bag, and it's ridiculous. So just make sure that you have your supplies for just writing notes and stuff. Have that in a separate pencil case, and then have your art ones. And then you only bring out your art pens when you're using them. That way, people don't get angry. At um, another thing is, is um, sketchbooks. So what's always good is to have a travel size sketchbook with you at all times just in case you get like some sudden inspiration. Then you can at least have a sketchbook in your purse or your bag or whatever. So something around this size or smaller is good um, as a travel size. You can use uh, just normal notebooks with lined paper in them if you don't really care about your random sketches. But if you want to like color them later, something like we have uh, the Copic sketchbooks here, which are really nice, and um, these are five by seven. There's 50 sheets of them. I sell them on my online store, but um, these these are a really good size if you go out. So when I'm at a convention, um, I'm gonna be honest. I have this giant sketchbook that I bring with me. <laughs> Um, but it's a pain in the butt if you bring it to a convention especially, so if I want to draw, I have to like prepare ahead of time if I, if I actually want to use like my copics and stuff, but if you, if you just want to sketch, if you sketch all the time and you just want to like sit down and draw, bring something around this size because it's manageable, and then you also have the option if you brought a couple copics with you, I have a friend who uh, just brings a couple colors and, and, and another pencil case, so you can have three pencil cases now, <laughs> but yeah, so you have the option to actually color your sketches if you have a nice small sketchbook. Um, what's a good mid-size sketchbook though is like this size, which is like this one's nine by twelve, but like nine by twelve, eight and a half by eleven, um, and then the A4 size paper. Any of those sizes are just kind of average, so those are good to bring everywhere. Um, but what I suggest if you're doing full background and everything, um, like full out drawings, if you, if you have a sketchbook, um, get this monster size, which is what I use. I use it um, in my art classes because what you can do is, because it is so large, um, here, I'll show, I'll show a fresh one. Here's a fresh one. Because it's so large, um, what you always want to do is if you have a background in your, like if you're doing a full drawing with background and everything, you're going to want to have at least one inch border. So you just measure out an inch, and then you still have a fairly large area where you can draw. So with the border and everything, you still have like huge area of space 
to draw in. And that way you don't wreck any of the other pages under your paper, etc. So that's important. I can tell you. So that. sketchbooks, having all of the sizes is really good. So having a big size is really great if you're actually doing like backgrounds and stuff. The bigger the better because then you can have a nice big border, cover the border in uh, scotch tape or masking tape. Um, that way when you color, you could just not even care about going off the paper or anything because you have two inches of border and then you have that piece of tape surrounding the paper so then if the Copic or whatever kind of markers you use goes over it, it's okay, it's not going on the paper. Then you have a nice crisp border and then when you scan it, it's just so much easier. So, And then smaller pieces, good for traveling. Um, I'll just go quickly um, about other papers other than sketchbooks. Um, I like using uh, sketchbooks for just sketching out ideas or my big one is just for final stuff but I use this this paper mainly for um, if I'm just doing if I know I'm just doing a drawing because then a sketchbook is a sketchbook you're just supposed to blot a bunch of ideas on I use the big ones again for my full drawings but the little ones not so much so I like using um, like you can use Copic paper you can use letter set paper doesn't matter, just nice marker paper is really nice to have. So, buy all of the paper. All the paper is going to be your friend. Um, uh, I'll start talking a little bit about fine liners. So, I use like all of the brands. All of the brands are like really good. Um, my favorite right now is the um, Mangaka fine liners. Um, these are really good. You can't refill the ink, unfortunately, or at least if you can, I have no idea how to. I really doubt you can. Uh, they're really good. The tips of them are really, really sturdy. So I usually blow through the Copic ones because I found them like, really hard sometimes. So that's not good. But these ones are, are really sturdy. The ink is really nice. Um, I find that they smudge less. Um, so, so they're really good. My Copic ones I really like because I can refill them, I can change the tip, so if I if I break one, I can at least just get a small part and then it's fixed forever, almost. Um, so that's really good. Um, the ink in them is really nice. Um, I find the, the, the only problem is when I erase sometimes the, the ink comes off of the paper, but once the ink, once you do a second coat on, it just looks beautiful. So I, I really like these ones. They're really, really nice. Um, I have these Pilot drawing pens. I, I just have one of them right now. I used to have more. These are really good for fine lining if you're lazy. <laughs> Me, personally, I use this if I want a fine line and I don't want to deal with a finicky... Uh, nib of the pen. So the Copics, Copic liners are the most finicky to use, but you can get the most amount of line difference because you can get many, many different sizes in the Copic ones. The Mangaka ones, they're a little bit more sturdy, but they don't have that many sizes. These ones I call my lazy pens, where the nibs are just so easy to use. You can use them, but it might not be the best ink, but I really like them still. Uh, the Le Pens, I like using them for when I'm just fine lining uh, a sketch because they, they go on really nice. Um, they're a nice ink. I don't have to spend too much time on it. It's kind of like it's kind of like my lazy pen, but I like using it for sketches. So if I'm just doing a quick color on a sketch, these ones are great. So these are the fine liners I use. Um, next supply that I'm going to talk about is my white ink so you can either get white paint no, white paint and get a paintbrush that takes the longest you can get the Copic opaque white ink which I use for splattering sometimes so here's the uh, Copic opaque white it comes in this really pretty bottle I like it um, you just open it up it's really really thick and pasty so you can just put it on like paint or you can um, put a little bit on a separate container, makes a little bit of water in it, and then um, get a paintbrush and then go bam bam, get like a bunch of snowflakes on the paper. It's really good if you're doing like, a bunch of stars and then you don't have to jam the uh, 
gel pen everywhere. So this is good for stars, it's good for the snowy effect that a lot of Copic users end up having. So this is a, this is really good ink. Um, I have this liquid chalk marker, which really destroys paper sometimes, so you have to be really careful with it. But um, I use it if I... Uh, I used it in... Um, i trying to find a good way of describing it. It's like... It's like the gel pen, but it's softer, so it's not as white. So I used it in my most recent print that I made with Pengusaurus and Nyan in space. Um, so right here. So it's the it's the really big little snowflake looking stars. So this one is like it's good, but I wouldn't use it for fine details. Um, this one is my gel pen which is my favorite tool. I use it for the shine on hair, the shine on eyes. If I'm doing a bunch of little, little stars, I go bam, 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 and then a bunch of little stars appear. So these are really good. You have to frequently replace them if you don't use them because sometimes the tips dry up and then the ink on the inside dries up. But if you use it all the time like me, it lasts quite a bit of time and then it runs out of ink because you have to get a new one anyways. So that's those supplies. Um, I'm going to go with the pencils. These are my two favorite pencils. <coughs> this one I like because it's got little cats on it. But I like this one because it's really lightweight. The, um, you'll find that when you use mechanical pencils, um, you can have your favorite pencils and your non-favorite pencils. And it doesn't have too much to do with the, the, the little patterns on it. So I like this one because it's got cats on it. But I also like it because it's really lightweight. The lead in the pencil comes out really, really smoothly. It's really, really nice. I like it. So when you um, use mechanical pencils, basically, you're going to go through a bunch of them. You're going to buy a bunch of them. And you're going to realize which ones you like the most. So this is this one. This one I, I like because it's really heavy. The lead comes out of it really nice. And it's like a nice weight when I'm drawing. So if I'm just kind of like drawing it's nice to know that my like pencils here like this is a really heavy pencil and it's really nice to draw with um, going on with lead personally I like B or 2B lead a lot of people hate it um, I like it because it draws on really really smoothly but a lot of people don't like it because it's smudgy because it's really soft lead it, when you when you sketch, if you like rub your hand all over the paper, it's going to smudge everywhere. <coughs> um, but I like B or 2B. B is a nice mint tone. HB is like, everyone uses HB lead. But um, I personally find it's too hard. So it doesn't like put nice smooth lines in. So I would suggest if you have... If you use mechanical pencils, test out different leads. You might like different kinds better. So I would definitely test with that. Another uh, important art supply that you're going to want to test out is erasers. You're... Everyone just thinks, I'm going to buy an eraser. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to erase with it. But certain erasers just don't erase as well as others. So, um, I'm going to talk about erasers. This is a beautiful eraser that is like a lifesaver for people who do really fine detailing work. So, this is a very, very tiny, itty bitty eraser. Like, really, really small. So, say you're drawing a character and you, like, totally realize that you messed up on, like, the left eye and you just want to redraw it. One of the biggest problems is if you use like an eraser like this, even though this is really small, you erase it, you erase like half of the hair, and you're like, now I have to redo everything. So this is small enough that you could just erase one tiny little section. So this is a really good eraser if you do fine detailing. So like say you're drawing lace on a character and you just don't like one section, you could just easily erase it. It's all good. Um, with big erasers, I personally like the Mono eraser. This is like the best eraser I have ever used. It's like soft, it really gets the pencil, it doesn't ruin the paper, it's not so hard that it like scrapes paper off. It's like 
the softest, most wonderful eraser I've ever used. This uh, St uh, Stadler erasers are really good, but um, again, like these are my favorite, the Monos. They're the best. Uh, St Stadler's just, they're really, really good if you can't find one of these, but if you can find one of these, this is the brand that you want. Or at least that's my personal opinion. Uh, this eraser is also quite good. This is the Factus eraser. Um, I, it's it's pretty soft. It erases really well. I'm not so gonna to sum it. up what I said about erasers. You want this one, the Mono. Okay, if you can find this one, this is the eraser you should get, in my opinion. Uh, moving on, um, I'll talk about markers. So I experimented. Yeah, I experimented with a lot of markers when I first started drawing. Um, that was because I couldn't find Copics anywhere. So I always when I first started using markers, I experimented with many different brands of markers. So um, that's that's because I, I was always looking for Copic markers and I can never find them. So I just tried a bunch of different brands. So. I experiment with a lot of markers, so I kind of know about a certain number of brands. So the first markers that I ever used were um, pearl markers, um, Pantone markers, which um, were really, really good, and um, they, they're discontinued. They turned into pearl markers, so pearl marker are pretty much the same thing. And then um, there's I also tried Prismacolor markers. Prismacolor markers weren't my favorite. Pro markers color really, really well. We sell them on um, the online store, so um, you can you can try them there. They're a little bit cheaper than Copic markers. They color really smoothly. They leave nice bold colors. Um, they're really, really rich and vibrant. But um, uh, there's not that many colors or it's hard to find a bunch of colors. Um, I prefer Copics. Um, they've got the small tip, they've got a big tip, they don't have the super Another brush. good, good, like, good marker is, um, we sell these, they're the Marby Uchida Lipju markers. These ones are really nice. Um, the colors are nice when, when, you, when you color, they're, they're nice, vibrant, rich colors. There's not that snowy texture when you color, so these markers are quite good. There's not that many colors, as you can see. But this is a really good basic kit because you get a bunch of colors and, um, you know, they're, they're pretty cheap. So they're, they're good as a basic starter. So these ones are, are good to start with. Um, um, uh, when I finally found Copics, I found the Copic Shell markers. These ones are nice. They're the exact same ink as the sketch, so if you if you have these, like, you don't have to upgrade to sketch. It's the same ink, but um, I started with these. There's not that many colors in this one, and um, but they they've got the nice uh, super brush tip, and then you got the chisel tip. Really nice. Copics color on with like kind of like a snowy texture. They they streak a lot if it's like a big area of space, but I love them. They have tons and tons of colors. It's a really good investment if you're really serious about becoming an illustrator or anything like that and you just want to do uh, traditional art and you don't want to go digital. These are really, really, really nice markers. Um, so these are good. I use the sketch markers and I converted all of my chow markers to sketch because I just love sketch. Um, in my opinion, they look prettier, so I like having them on my desk. And they're just really, really easy to hold. So, <coughs> sorry. Um, they're easy to hold because they, they've got this oval shape, unlike these ones. These ones are round. So these ones won't really slip out of your hands. Really good to hold on to. They, you can refill them. They hold more ink than the chows. They're, they're my favorite marker. I love them. I use the crap out of them. They're the best tool, in my opinion. Um, they're expensive if you go to... Uh, a local store, so I sell them on my online store for really cheap, and you may have to deal with shipping or whatever. But honestly, if you want to get a crap ton of markers, I would buy them online from our store because if you find them anywhere locally, for these guys, when I when when I didn't have my online store, I paid eight dollar a marker 
it was, it's ridiculous pricing. Like, it's really expensive, so like, you have to be really serious if you buy them in person. If you buy them online, you can get a bunch of them, they're pretty much like half the price. So, <laughs> it's a good deal online. And like, pro markers to buy them in person is like $5 a marker. So, they're really expensive, but getting markers, if, if you're really, really serious about traditional art and you love the way markers look, it's a really good investment to just slowly buy them, and that's how I did it. I slowly bought colors. I started with my basics, spent a lot of money, got all my basic markers, and then I bought maybe two markers a week type deal. I just keep buying them because I love them, and this is how many I have now. I love them, and I use them. They're, they're my my art supply for my school. I, I use them all the time. So. If you're worried about money, honestly, if, if you're really serious about art and it's not just a hobby for you, I would spend the extra money. So, so just, in, it's, it's an investment. Um, and what's great about the Copics is you don't have to keep replacing them. Uh, you can buy refills, so you got refills, so you can refill them. It's like $10 or so to get a refill, and you fill up your marker, like, more than three times. It's, it's great. These these are what the refills look like. It's a, it's a lot of ink and you'll be able to use your marker all the time. And then on top of it you just buy some extra nibs and stuff and then you've got clean fresh new nibs. So it's like having a new marker. So it's a good investment in my opinion. Like They're, they're amazing markers. They're the markers that I go to. Again, if you're serious about being an illustrator or something and you love markers, I would invest in them. They cost a lot of money and it sucks because you spend so much money on your markers, but in the end, you get a crap ton of colors and you just color beautifully and it's just fun. So, I would suggest that. <laughs> so, if I missed anything, leave a comment. I'll try to respond to it in a later video, but this is all I have to say about art supplies for now. So, thank you so much for watching my video. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos on tutorials, tips, art supplies, etc. So, please subscribe. Thank you for watching my video. Have a good day. Okay. Don't forget to download my app on the App Store, Pagey World. Um, you can post your pictures there. You can get tutorials. It's, it's a great app if you want to get your artwork seen by everyone. So, check it out.